Hi guys, welcome to today's video. We are going to be talking about decluttering regrets, the ones that I have and how in general I think you can avoid having regrets about things that you declutter. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Ashley. I'm a mom of seven and last summer I went on a massive decluttering spree as we prepared to buy our first home and move from a 20, 22, 2400 square foot home down to a 1600 square foot home. And really I was just trying to declutter my life in an effort to declutter my mind. <laughs> and so today we are going to chat just a little bit about that kind of decluttering process and avoiding regret in the process. Um, you may notice that I sound a little weird. Well, okay, if you're new here, you may not know. You might think this is just how I always sound. Weather in the Carolinas has been nuts in the last week, week and a half. We've had snow, we've had 75 degree weather, we've had like rain enough to have flooding and big storms and tornadoes. It's been insane and my sinuses and my all of this is just not happy. So I sound a little bit um, froggy sound a little froggy, so forgive my froggy voice today. All right, guys, let's jump into talking about decluttering and regrets. So like I said, last summer, our family bought our first home and we moved into a much smaller home. Um, and in preparation for that, I began decluttering like a mad woman. I'm talking three, four, five trips with a you know van trunk full of stuff every week for like four to six weeks. And I know one of people's biggest concerns when they're decluttering, because it was definitely one of mine as well, was what if I regret this? Like, what if I need this again? What if I want this in the future? And so I'm gonna share with you guys kind of how I worked around that mindset and um, if I actually ended up regretting getting rid of anything. Spoiler, there were a few things that I did regret decluttering and I'll get to that at the end. So one of the first things I did was I followed a whole bunch of people on Instagram <laughs> who were minimalists and talked a lot about decluttering and getting rid of our stuff and kind of decluttering our minds and our lives by getting rid of all the junk in our house that takes up space that we don't use, that isn't useful, um, and that just is clutter and excess and just too much. And I read a lot about, you know, a poverty mindset versus an abundance mindset. The idea that there's not enough versus the idea that what you have is enough and that there will be more if you need it in the future. Um, and kind of working away from that idea that we have to hoard everything that we have, whether it's, you know, our money or um, our things, a kitchen full of stuff that you never ever use, but you think someday I might host a dinner party and need this one thing for this one special occasion. Um, and really that stuff that we're hoarding just takes up so much space, so much mental space. And we have to clean it and we have to take care of it. And, and I actually ended up finding it so freeing to just release all of this stuff that I didn't need in my life. We have seven kids and in order to keep a sane mama and a clean home, it is so helpful to just have less to start with. So, so a few of the questions that I asked myself when I was getting rid of things was, when was the last time I used this thing? Oftentimes I had never used it um, or I had used it once in the last two or three years. This is especially true for like small kitchen appliances and things like that. Things that you find hiding in the back of your closet, clothing that you haven't worn either because it's too big or it's too small or it just doesn't suit your phase of life anymore. Um, I find that if it's not something that you have used frequently in the last year or so, you're probably not going to use it again. Um, and so that would be something that I would declutter without a second thought. The next question that I would ask is if I need this, if I find myself needing this thing again, is it something that I can borrow or easily replace? And by easily replace, I'm mostly considering the cost. Um, and everyone's kind of easily replaceable cost you know, your marker line is gonna be different. For some people, it might be as low as $5. For other people, it might be $20 or $50 or $100. Um, you know, depending on your budget and lifestyle, is this item something that you can easily replace if you find that you do 
miss it in the future, whether by borrowing, which I think is a great way to replace things that you really only need very, very occasionally is, is to borrow them if you need them. Um, so I kind of thought to myself, you know, if it's under $20, that's easily replaceable for me. And so I'm not even going to really give it a second thought if I haven't used it in the last year, then I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of it, especially if it's like under $20 and I can easily replace it. The third thing is, will someone else get more use out of this than I do? Um, this is something that has been especially true for me for baby gear and baby clothes. Um, I've had two babies since I've been on YouTube and when sharing the things that I buy for my babies, people often ask, don't you have these things left over from your other children? Um, and I guess I've, I haven't always been a minimalist and I've frequently spent money on things that I don't really need. However, when it comes to baby stuff, <laughs> I've always been the kind of person that's like, I'm not using it right now, somebody else can use it and I can just replace it or borrow it in the future if it's something that I find that I need again. Um, so I don't hoard baby things. I don't store baby clothes. I don't store baby gear with a couple of exceptions. You know, I do have a couple of strollers now that I really like, so I'm just hanging on to them even though we don't use them very frequently. And I pass them on. I pass them on to friends or I donate them so that they can be useful stuff is meant to be used. And if I'm not using it, then it can be a blessing to somebody else and they can use it and it can actually serve its purpose on this planet. At the end of the day for me, I really just desperately wanted less stuff in our lives. I see the value in kind of a more minimalistic lifestyle, less cleaning, less maintenance, less mess especially when it comes to kids toys and things like that my kids are so much happier with less stuff because they're not overwhelmed by their stuff i really did have to think long and hard about declutter regrets there were only three that i really regretted and ended up replacing and <clears throat> one thing that i regretted getting rid of but it's not so easily replaced i mean it is easily replaceable but not like the same exact specific item so the first thing is my jade roller. I had a young baby, you know, Ruby wasn't, she was six-ish months old. And so I wasn't, you know, doing my skincare routine and all of that, I was just doing the basics. And so I was like, I haven't used this jade roller in forever. I'm just gonna donate, I'm just gonna get rid of it. Well, I ended up wishing that I had still had it. A few months later, when she got a little older and it got a little easier to do my routines, but I still waited probably another <clears throat> four months more before replacing it. And let me just tell you the sadness, you guys. I replaced my jade roller. Then one of the kids took it to play with it and it ended up on the floor and then it got stepped on and broken in half. It's still usable. I can still roll my face with it. It works. So I'm not gonna you know, go out and buy another one because this one will still do the job of lymphatic drainage you know, decrease swelling, Ugh, feels so good. <laughs> I'm just gonna sit here and roll my face for a minute. So this was one of those things that I said, it's under $20, I haven't used it in forever, I can definitely declutter this, and ended up wishing that I hadn't, but it was easily replaceable. As a matter of fact, I think it was like $6 at Ross. So um, not a big deal for me to replace, but it was a regret. So the next thing I ended up decluttering and regretting was, <laughs> this right here, my little lapel mic. Um, I had purchased a lapel, the same lapel mic on Amazon a couple of years ago actually when my, I don't know if you guys remember this, when my phone, when I would do Insta stories would make this terrible buzzing noise. So I bought the lapel mic because if I used a separate mic than my phone mic, then it wouldn't make the noise and it wasn't so annoying. And I sorta of kinda used it, but then my phone one day just magically fixed itself. And so when I was decluttering the house, found my lapel mic and went, oh, I don't need this anymore. And so I donated it. Well, then I was doing some research about how to improve my audio on my YouTube videos and uh, came across a video that was like, this cheap lapel mic, you know, makes such a huge difference. And I was like, oh man. Once again, though, it was a $20 item. So for me, I consider that an easily replaceable item. And I did end up, obviously, 
replacing my lapel mic. The third thing that I decluttered that I did end up replacing was not an under $20 item. This one was more expensive to replace. And that was my Nespresso um, coffee maker and milk frother um, for making like lattes at home. At the time I decluttered it, I had not yet made the connection between my caffeine consumption and my anxiety levels. And so I was drinking a ton of coffee all the time and we ended up just kind of going back to drinking coffee, like a, brewing a big pot of coffee. And then Nespresso pods are a little bit more expensive. And I was like, you know what? I'm just not using this enough. I'll sell it. I ended up selling it and making a little bit of cash on it, um, which was great as we were getting ready to move. But then once I made the um, connection between caffeine and my anxiety levels, I wished that I still had it because I love lattes. I love a good creamy, frothy, you know, cup of coffee in the afternoon, especially, a, uh, but now I drink decaf and I found myself going to Starbucks way, way, way too much. I was spending so much money at Starbucks, you guys. Um, so after Thanksgiving and Black Friday, Target had the Keurig that has the milk frother and you can and you can use the K-cups, but it will brew it as a shot. Um, so I ended up replacing the Nespresso with the Keurig coffee maker, which was definitely more than $20, but it has more than paid for itself since then. I just buy the decaf recyclable K-cups. I keep meaning to get the reusable one um, that you can just put your own grounds in. But anyway, it has saved me so much money at Starbucks. The only time I go to Starbucks now is if I'm like, going somewhere with a friend or maybe on the rare occasion I might run to Target and get um, a Starbucks at Target while I do my shopping there. I am not going five plus times a week. So it has definitely paid for itself. Um, so that was one that was not cheap to replace, but I did, but I did end up replacing that um, because I regretted it. I love my afternoon lattes. <laughs> and the last thing that I ended up regretting decluttering was a cardigan sweater. It was kind of like a deep dusty rose color. And at the time I decluttered it, I was going ham on my clothes. I got rid of so much. Um, I got down to I think 40 total clothing items, which is actually about where I sit because I find now that when I bring something new in, there's something else that I'm like, yeah, I'm just not wearing this. I'm gonna go ahead and donate it. Donate it. I don't know why I can't talk right now. Um, but that sweater I ended up regretting because it was such a pretty color and it was so cozy and soft, but I was like, oh, it's pink. I don't really wear pink. I'm not a pink person. Um, I don't know really why I thought that at the time, but it's not, it's not that I can't find another pink cardigan. It's just that I can't replace it with the exact same thing. Um, so it is what it is. Haven't replaced that one yet, but I would say out of a household full of stuff that we got rid of last summer. Having just four things that I regretted getting rid of is really not so bad, um, especially when they were mostly pretty replaceable items. So if you are on a decluttering journey, ask yourself some questions. Be really honest with yourself about how much you really use the thing um, and really if somebody else could make better use of it. I love the feeling of knowing that like, if I donate something really cool, like somebody's gonna come across that in the store and be thrilled that they found this really awesome thing at Goodwill. Like it gives me happy fuzzy feelings to think like that. Um, so ask yourself, you know, those questions, be really honest with yourself and know that at the end of the day, it's just stuff. It's just stuff. Um, it's not the important thing in life and, and you can't take it with you. Um, so if it's hindering your connection with the people around you or it's keeping you crazy busy because you, you have to spend so much time taking care of all your stuff that you can't be with your people, um, that's the biggest, for me, the biggest blessing of decluttering is the blessing of more time. Of more time to just hang out in my room and snuggle my babies or sit on the couch and watch a movie with my kids because I don't have to frantically clean because there's far less to clean and take care of. No regrets there. All right, guys, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching. I'm going to link my 
Budgeting and minimalism, I kind of have those in the same category. Maybe I should split those up. Anyway, I'm gonna link that playlist here for you guys if you want to see some more videos on the decluttering process and kind of where our family's head's at um, right now as it comes to our stuff. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.